my dear students so let's begin today's class yes today we are going to discuss about a new lesson living in harmony we know that there are many organisms present on the earth and all organisms depend one over the another right children yes so you can see the picture children what can you understand from the picture it's an aquarium and inside the aquarium there are fish but do you think that the fish is happy in that life in the life with the aquarium no right because it doesn't get all the facilities which is available in the pond so there are certain factors so the two factors are biotic and abiotic factors biotic means living organisms like plants and animals or microorganisms and abiotic means non living things like water soil sunlight air etc so what are the factors which can be seen in the pond you can see tiny plants you can see algae you can see water then soil air sunlight this all are the factors we can see in the pond which we will not get in an aquarium you will get water and all but as that which we see in an aquarium we will not get that much facilities in an aquarium okay then you can see a picture children can you see the picture yes you can see that many organisms are depending on one another yes and the surroundings the natural surroundings in which an organisms live is called as habitat and the biotic and abiotic factors and their mutual relationship how they are related to each other is called an ecosystem for example the habitat of fish is water an ecosystem is the pond so from this picture you can see that all the organisms are dependent one over the another for example there are many abiotic factors in this picture like water air sunlight soil we all know that plants require light for their existence so plants depend on the light for their growth and herbivores like deer which you can see from the picture depends on the plants for their food and crane it requires small small insects so this is called an ecosystem so which all are the ecosystems which exist in our uh, surroundings yes forest ponds oceans many more are there right yes so you can see a box given in your textbook there they have shown the organisms and they have told you to write the biotic and abiotic factors first one they have given fox fox eats hen rabbit and abiotic factors are water and hair worm eats small small uh, insects and plants and they also require water and air and also you can include other two animals like lion for example lion it eats fox deer and it also requires a biotic factor like water and air then snake it eats the frog small small birds it also requires water and air as abiotic factors so 
So this you can write it in your textbook. So talking about biotic and abiotic factors, there is an observation of Ammu which is clearly given in your textbook. She happens to visit a pond along with her teacher. And she is describing what all she observed in the pond. She saw many fishes swimming along in the water. And they were feeding the tiny plants which was present in the water. Then a grasshopper had fallen into the water and suddenly a fish came and swallowed it, caught it and swallowed it. Then she can see a small hole in the pond and from that hole a snake came and snake was eating the frog and this all was a scary sight for them. They were all afraid when they saw the snake. Then they saw a group of fish. For the group of fish, we will say school. School of fish was swimming along there. And when they saw a big fish, they all hide behind the algae. Algae are small uh, organisms which are having chlorophyll and which can prepare their own food. Chlorophyll is a green pigment which helps to prepare the food. So this all are the uh, things she observed in the pond. And which all are the factors here? Water, soil, sunlight, air, yes, tiny plants, algae. This all are the factors which she could see in the pond. So this is about biotic and abiotic factors. Biotic is living organisms, abiotic is non-living organisms. Now coming about food. All organisms need food for their existence, right? Without food we cannot live. So this food also will form a chain. For example, grass. Grass can be eaten by grasshopper. Grasshopper by frog, frog can be eaten by snake, snake can be eaten by the eagle. So you can see that an organism eats another organism and one organism becomes the food for another as a chain. So this is called food chain. There is an activity in your textbook. Which tells that you have to complete the food relationship between these animals. So how can you do children? Yes, first we can write grass, deer, lion. Then grass, which is eaten by grasshopper. Then frog, snake. Then you can say grass, which is eaten by rabbit, then fox, then tiger, then grass, worm, fowl, fowl is a hen, and fox. So these are the different food chains you can create from these pictures. So many food chains join together to form a food web. See this is the pattern of a food web. There will be many food chains which is joined together. So you can see from the food chain the initial level is the grass. So first is the green plants. If you make a chart the first level will be the green plants. Then the second level or intermediate level will be the herbivorous or omnivorous. Then the topmost level will be carnivorous. 
you can see that so initial level the green plants middle herbivorous or omnivorous and the topmost level is the carnivora so this is the pattern for the food chain now talking about the producers and the consumers producers are organisms which produce their own food for example green plants that is with the help of photosynthesis they prepare their own food consumers are the organisms which eat another organisms that is they depend on other organisms for food and they depend upon plants directly and indirectly so they are called consumers example human beings animals so you know that lion tiger yes for lion tiger who are the carnivores herbivores or omnivores become the food for the carnivores and the carnivores depend upon the plants directly and indirectly indirectly means they will eat the herbivores like that they will get the plant products and plants directly means herbivores depends upon the plants directly human beings also eat vegetables directly from the plants and indirectly they will eat the non veg so that is about directly and indirectly so this is about producers and consumers so this is about today's topic so today we learned about the importance of biotic and abiotic factors and what is a, a habitat what is ecosystem then we learned about food chain and how to create the food chain and food web producers and consumers hope you have understood this so bye children